Please. Thank you, Ken Corla and Minister. Look, there was a lot of money available to government, so there are positive aspects to this budget and things I agree with. For example, your two funds, the Future Ireland Fund and the Infrastructure, Climate and Nature Fund. I actually voted for them in the last budget and I'm glad to see they are continued this time and I see you're investing in, in Irish water and in the Land Development Agency. And you have a few decent proposals, um, let's say on agriculture, where non-farmers uh, who buy land will need to hold on to it for a minimum of six years and actively farm it before they can get a tax-free exemption from passing it on. Um, I see you have a tax on e-cigarettes. You have a higher rate of stamp duty on bulk acquisition of houses, which, of course, we tried to bring in earlier this year, but the, vote, the government voted against. And, and all of those are positive aspects uh, to this budget. I see you've kept the 9% VAT rate on electricity and on the installation of heat pumps. But this is a massive sum of money. And when a government has that kind of money available to it, we expect to see real impact, real change. We expect, as many people have said here today, to see a transformative budget. And while there are, as I said, a number of politically very attractive decisions here, the Taoiseach himself said he wouldn't apologise for any of them. And of course, why would he? They're, they're vote-getters. But, Minister, we have to look beyond the surface. We've got to look and see the substantive issues in this budget and how this money is being spent. It, it's not as if I've always said, it's a minister puts their hand in their back pocket and says, here's my money, I'm giving it to you. This is the taxpayer's money. So it's not just about spending money, it's about how it's spent, where it's spent, it's about the vision, it's about the transformation, and it's about value for money. And I'll just give you one example of, of why I think um, you're not so much dealing with the bread and butter issues, but more with the, the jam on the top of the bread. We have, for example, a free book scheme and free school meals. And of course we need them, and parents are delighted to see them, and parents are voters. But let's look at the education system. Let's look at the primary school system. And we see that primary schools are on their needs. Capitation grants are totally inadequate. We have the lowest, sorry, the highest pupil-teacher ratio in Europe, and our teachers are emigrating. So that's, they're the substantive issues. And of course we need free school books and free school meals. But for anyone to suggest that that deals with the, the substantive issues in education, it simply doesn't. And, and that's my concern about certain parts of this budget. I think it underpins a lot of the thinking here. And of course, this is an election budget. Let's not pretend it's anything else. If we look at childcare, for example, yes, we have increased, decreased the cost to parents, which is, again, hugely important. People need to be able to afford childcare. But people also need to be able to access childcare. And in my own county of Sligo, six childcare providers have closed their doors this year. Seven actually, but one of them has gone to a community service. And the reason they're closing is because they just simply cannot remain open and make a profit. So the system that's in place is attractive and parents are very happy to see that costs are coming down. Not enough, but they are coming down. But you also can't ignore the accessibility and that there is actually childcare available for parents. And, and it's some of these, um, I would say, short-sighted measures that don't deal <coughs> with the totality of the issue you know, that I have real concern about. And I suppose the one-off payments are again a, certain, a symptom of that. And many of them, again, all of them, in fact, people will welcome them because they're, they're money in their back pocket. But we know that if we really want to deal with poverty, whether it's child poverty or family poverty, 
we know that it's long-term social welfare increases that matter. And you have a few of them in your budget, Minister. I was glad to see, for example, that CARES allowance is now a qualifying uh, payment for fuel allowance. That's really important. And that the age limit on fuel allowance is gone from 70 to 66, depending on a person's means. So it's not as if you have none of this. But you haven't enough, you haven't made a substantive or transformative change in this budget. Now, Minister, when it comes to agriculture, somehow it always seems to be a distant cousin when it comes to the budget. More of the same and a few extra euro thrown in uh, here and there. But one of the issues that really concerns me is there's nothing about the efficiency of schemes, how they're delivered how they're paid, and the increasing red tape and bureaucracy. And we're looking at extra money for acres, for example, but we see how badly that scheme has been managed. And farmers have lost faith in it. So it's not just about money sometimes. It's, it's, just, it's also about the schemes themselves and how they operate. Now, Minister who stood up and he talked about four things. He said, our investment has resulted in so many children benefiting from free school books and free school meals, etc. And I accept that, but nobody on this side of the house looked at the perilous state of our education system. He talked about a significant increase in health expenditure. Yes, but the numbers on trolleys have increased every single year since this government took office. And my own hospital, Sligo University Hospital, is always in the top three, including today. It's just one behind Galway at 51 people waiting on trolleys. He talks about the number of new homes, and he actually says 116,000 new homes delivered since 2020. Divide that by four and a half, because it's four and a half years. That's 25,777 houses per year. We need twice that, Minister. You know it, and I know it. So that's not an achievement. And he talked about a record number of people in employment. Yeah, that's true but our young people are emigrating in droves because they can't get housing. So, you know, we have to manage both of those things. I was hugely disappointed that you did not reinstate the 9% VAT rate for hospitality businesses in the food sector. It will have a significant negative impact, especially in rural areas. There will be job losses, and indigenous Irish businesses will close, Minister. That's as sure as night follows day. Also, this budget has put increased uh, costs on business. Yes, we have increased the minimum wage, and I'm always <laughs> bemused by the fact that the government say, we increase the minimum wage. It's actually employers who pay the increased minimum wage. And governments need to support them to do that, especially small businesses. Minister, there's a lot more in this budget. I'll have a chance to speak about some of it tomorrow. But again, no more than Deputy Connolly, I was really disappointed to see that there was not a cost of disability payment included in this budget. And I see when it comes to the Defence Forces, you talk about increasing numbers and improving their uniforms. I would suggest you need to look at improving their terms and conditions as well. And finally, balanced regional development, two mentions in the whole budget, regional airports and uh, urban regeneration. Minister, and I'll finish with this sentence. Given that the European Commission has ranked the northern and western region as 218 out of 234 European regions when it comes to infrastructure, those two items will not even begin to close that gap. Thank you, Deputy. We now stand.